Real quick before I start this video, I just want to take a short moment to plug my merch. I don't like to do that. I find it annoying. Normally, I just wear the merch and hope that that inspires somebody to go, but it doesn't really work like that. So please head to shop.spreadshirt.com slash Simon's Rants. That's where you'll find all of my official merch. I've created these designs myself, and they go on to very high quality material. I've checked it out. I've looked at it. I've worn it, and it's all good. I promise it is. I'm not just saying that. You can get it on hood. Hoodies, you can get it on t-shirts, sweaters, backpacks, mugs, cups, all sorts of things over there. Also, please take a moment to subscribe if you haven't already because the more people that are subscribed, it increases how many people YouTube will show the video to and then more people can see it from there, more people can subscribe and it keeps growing and growing and growing and then it helps me out a lot. So if you're new here or you just haven't yet for whatever reason, but you like what you see here, please take a moment to because it's free and it helps a lot. Thanks. On with the video. So if you're like me, and by that I mean grew up in a similar manner to how I did, which was in a conservative Christian household, and in my particular case homeschooled, but that's not necessary, you saw a lot of videos that nobody else saw and nobody else knew existed. And of course there's the classics like VeggieTales. Almost everybody knows what VeggieTales is, even if they weren't born Christian or in that similar situation. But even within this group of people that I'm talking about, the Christian homeschooled conservatives, you had a very, very small group that knew of a little VHS tape called Little Dogs on the Prairie. And uh, I don't think I know anybody else outside of my family that's seen this. And I haven't seen it in years. I've wanted to go through these old, really nostalgic, really niche uh, things that I don't know anybody else personally that's seen these things and put them out on the internet and see what comes back because I know for a fact specifically this isn't easy to find. I had to buy the VHS tape because I couldn't buy the DVD. I think it had a limited release on DVD or something because I saw some hints and trails of there being a DVD at some point but there was not one on sale anywhere online. And on top of that you can't find the videos of this particular episode online. I've looked. I've looked hard for this. I think you can find other episodes online. I'm not positive about that, but this is the one that's most nostalgic for me, and I could not find it anywhere. So I had to buy the VHS tape. I had to buy a VHS to digital adapter and record it onto my laptop. So the quality really sucks just to let you know in advance, just so I could see for the first time in, gosh, maybe 15 years, Maybe more? I don't know. Pride, Prejudice, and Fudge. If you've seen this before, you're probably all excited to go on a nostalgic trip with me. And if you've never seen this before, you probably have no idea what you're in for. So, honestly, I don't know what I'm in for. I don't remember much about this, but let's just do it. This is The Little Dogs on the Prairie. In 1 Samuel 16:7. The Bible tells us that while we might judge someone from the outside, God judges from the inside. And learning to value the content of someone's character more than the texture of their skin was a lesson the little dogs on the prairie needed to learn on the day of our story. Not the good looking one, present and accounted for. Yes, even the good looking one. Beauty's a curse. <laughs> He's my spirit animal. The best thing about watching old stuff like this that you watch growing up is you find out where you learned your personality from. It all started when Hollister, who owned the general store and telegraph office, got too busy to be able to send the telegrams. Business is booming, and I'm falling behind. Hey, Hollister, did you send my telegram to the IRS yet? Well, uh... Gilroy T. Prairie Dog? Yes? Come with us. Oh boy, I definitely need to get some help. You think you need help? Help! That's good. <laughs> It's very fast-paced comedy already. My name is Stanza. Stop. I have just graduated from TTT, Telegraph Technical Training. Stop. No need to apply. The job is yours. Stop. Come at once. Stop. If you're thinking of stopping, don't. Stop. I wonder how many of these jokes I actually got as a kid, because I feel like most of these probably actually went over my head. I don't get it. I thought for sure he'd be on this train. Excuse me, are you Mr. Hollister? Ah, snake! Hello, sir. I'm Stanza, your new telegraph operator. What? I can't hire a snake. 
Everybody knows snakes are nasty, rotten, horrible, disgusting, low-down, belly-crawling, vermin-infested varmints. Uh, no offense. None taken, sir. I'm used to it. I also definitely didn't pick up on the obvious racism analogy here. When you're a kid, an innocent kid, you just miss so much. You're just like, oh yeah, sure, it's snakes. Screw them. Everybody hates snakes. I'm a friendly snake. Don't bite, don't strangle, don't smoke, don't drink, don't chew, and don't slither with those who do. Good, but uh, I should warn you, most folks around here aren't as tolerant as me. You don't mind working nights, do you? I wouldn't want anybody to see you. No, sir. I'm used to it. Good God, this is depressing. <laughs> True to his word, he was indeed a very clean, hard-working snake. Be fast! Don't forget fast! Some of those telegrams are arriving even quicker than the mail! Should all telegrams arrive faster than the mail? Guess that's the joke. Good job, Simon. You're thinking too much about an obvious joke. Smart! Then, one night while the prairie dogs were tucked in their beds, they heard something in the distance. Wait, I thought they were prairie dogs. Why is there a prairie cat? What? Now that I think about it, none of them are actually prairie dogs. He's like a dog dog. Uh, hello, folks. Uh, uh, don't open till nine. Hollister, this is beautiful. Who's doing the singing? Not wanting them to find out he had hired a snake, Hollister said, Uh, well, I sure didn't hire an opera singing snake, if that's what you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Quick thinking. <laughs> Got them right off your trail with that one. <laughs> hired someone to work the telegraph at night, but he's very shy, so if you enjoy his singing, I suggest you keep back from the store for a piece. Don't let him see you, and whatever you do, don't try to see him. Hurry up! Hurry up! I saw him in clubs. So, night after night, the townsfolk were treated to wonderful singing. I'm, you know, I'm not saying I couldn't sing like that, you know, with practice. It's just that, wow, the way the guy moves you. Know. Once again, I love this guy. He is my favorite. He said, like, two things, and he's my favorite. I've developed a contraption which will allow us to record and replay the melodious melodies on a piece of flat rotating wax. Wow, that's the kind of thing that will never be obsolete. That was two anti-jokes right in a row. They just, it was like, oh, 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 they're ready for that. Snake, there's a snake in there. Ah! Now if you just listen. Oh, sure, now the snake lover has something to say. Well, we're not interested. Yeah, in fact, until you get rid of that snake, we're not interested in anything you have to sell either. Yeah. I say we boycott Hollister's general store. Boycott, boycott. Wait, shouldn't we stock up before we boycott? We could get hungry. Excellent plan. Stop! Come again. Thank you. <laughs> the commentary is just on point. This is people. This is humanity, man. The definition of no publicity is bad publicity. Oh, wait, wait, what's this? It's from Stanza. Dear Mr. Mr. Hollister. I'm sorry I caused everyone to boycott your store. But it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. I'm rich. Oh, uh, it's too good. It is. To keep from causing you any further pain, I've decided I must go. Go? Yes, go. So long, Mr. Hollister. Your friend, Stanza. Ah, oh, kid. I really liked you. I really liked you too, sir. Why? Why is that funny to me? It's a simple fourth wall break, but it's funny, okay? It's funny. It's funny. Well, you got your wish. More doodly-doos? No. The snake is gone. Yeah! Say, did he happen to wire for the doodly doos before he left? Will you forget the doodly doos? All right. How can you forget about the doodly doos? It's impossible. I don't even know what a doodly doo is, but I want one. I hope you're all happy with yourselves. I know I am. This place just isn't gonna be the same once I tear it down and make my own private golf course. <laughs> I definitely didn't notice that joke as a kid. That's great. That night, the prairie dogs gathered to hear the beautiful music, content in the knowledge that because the town was now snake free, their magnificent singer would return. They waited and waited. And nothing happened. Uh, people are dumb. I know this is obviously scripted, but it's accurate. Over the next several weeks, the little dogs continued to search the prairie, trying to find Stanza, to tell him they were sorry and invite him back to live with them. Can you sing Restless Los Moblia in D? <laughs> oh, 
Uh, am I the only one that's gonna be laughing at this? I'm gonna post this video and everybody's gonna be like, Why do you think this is good? Let me get this straight. You think that Little Dogs on the Prairie is funny? I do. And I'm tired of pretending it's not. The prairie dogs gathered at night and played sports recording. And even though no one said it, no one needed to. They knew they had made a big mistake. I wasn't prepared for a Jesus song number all of a sudden. Why was I ready for it? I don't know, but I wasn't ready for it. Little dog, little dog, you said love in your heart for everyone. So are we just not concerned about the snake anymore? I know we all learned our lesson, but he's still experiencing racism everywhere he goes. Yeah, we learned our lesson. That's what's important. Not that his life sucks. The Bible says in Proverbs 16, 18, that pride goes before destruction. Okay, episode two. In case you hadn't picked up on this, these episodes are really short. They're just 10 minutes each, but there's three of them. So we're watching three of them. It all started when Scout, Darcy, and Sport were sitting on the porch of Hollister's store doing one of their favorite things, telling stories. Well, one thing led to another, and Scout bragged a little about how he had learned to make balloon animals. Yes, I did it, guys. Look. That's, um, really good, Scout. What is it? It's a worm, sleeping. What's this, Sport? Just a little something I threw together while we were waiting for you to finish your sleeping worm. You know, as a kid, I always thought that they were really cool. Now I'm just wondering if they're witches. I can't even get mine to stay in a knot. Oh, wait a minute, spoke too soon. Oh, never mind. Don't feel bad, Scout. How? Hey, what's going on out here? You didn't pop any of those balloons, did you? You pop them, you bought them. No, sir, Mr. Hollister. You better put them back in the bag. Yes, sir. There you go, Mr. Hollister. Oops, sorry, Mr. Hollister. I kind of popped it. Then you bought it. It's not like I can just put it in a bag and set it back on the shelf. Wait a minute. Yes, I can. Hand it over. There's surprisingly really good writing in this. And there's like only three of these that exist. As far as I know, I only ever saw three. Maybe there's more. I'll have to put in more research later. But like, why didn't these catch on? They're really well made. Here, have some gum. Thanks. For free? Free? Don't be ridiculous. I'll run you a tab. Free. It's kids in their language these days. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Maybe he's the best character. Wow, Scout! That's the biggest bubble I've ever seen! Look out! She's gonna blow! That was amazing! It certainly was! Who are you? Quaggle Q, Quaggle Bush at your service. Owner and operator of the Triple Q Extra Special Prairie Dog Traveling Prairie Extravaganza. Okay, we're still working on the name. Yeah, you should work on that. I already forgot what it was. You, my boy, have the kind of act that would really pack them into our show. How would you like to be a star? Really? That's great, Scout! Yeah, you've always wanted to do something special. Yeah, he always wanted to not be a loser. He always wanted to do something that people would remember you for. He always wanted to not be just like every other person. Too bad that's what you've been up until this point in your life. Yep, Scout's life has been one failure after another. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> I was joking. She actually said it. Oops. <laughs> Welcome to the big time, kid. The world is my stage. Yours is that piece of tape in the center ring. Try not to stand too close to that man-eating tiger. Well, if he's a man-eating tiger, then you don't have to worry because you're a prairie dog. Also, if that's how big the tiger is compared to him, the tiny tiger, just say. I don't understand how these sizes work. Behold the wonders of Ricky R. Roadster, who will now spell out the entire dictionary with a single lasso. Now in Hebrew. How is this not impressing you people? <laughs> That's physically impossible. And you're like, nah. Betty B. Balancer will now juggle 300 cowboy heads, keep 19 hula hoops hula hooping, totter on the tip of one of her spurs while twirling a grand piano on her nose. 
I've seen better. I don't know, kid. To me, that actor's always needed something. Yeah, like talent. Ugh, doesn't have any of that, but you know what does? Blowing bubbles and with bubble gum. That's talent. Look out, she's gonna blow. We'll be covered in gum too. That is actually talent. I've I've never blown a, a bubble and not have it explode on my face. So you know what? Yeah, I can blow that. They applaud like guy from the Lorax. This is unbelievable. Here I was thinking I wasn't very special. Why is he wearing clothes? If he's not wearing clothes, one of them is either wearing clothes unnecessarily or he's just nude. Scout, there's someone I want you to meet. Go away. I'm getting ready for tonight's show. Scout, I'd like you to come out here and meet Bubble Blowing Bob. Not Bubble Blowing Bob. Ugh. Even the name of a shivers down your spine. I challenge you to a bubble blowing duel. Three pieces of gum. Biggest bubble wins. I could use a warm up before the show. Let's make it interesting. You use three pieces, and I'll just use one. Let's make it really interesting. I'll use a chiclets. Then I'll use a tic tac. I don't I'll dry think out the inside would, of my no, mouth with a hair dryer. None of I'll that fill will my work. Mouth with sand. That won't. No. Okay, what? <laughs> Does he have helium in his lungs? Also, just... How, what? Unless he's lighter than air, in which case he would just do that without the bubble, right? I'm confused. I don't know. I just, ah, I, I don't know physics that well, but that just, I don't know. Something about that seems a little off. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I am Bob. My name is Jeff. I know I acted badly, and I wasn't a very good friend. I, well, I just wanted to say I'm sorry. Hey, Scout! Yeah? Heard any good stories lately? I heard one about a guy who could blow really big bubbles because his head was so full of hot air. Is that the one where he comes crawling back to his friends like a snake in the grass? Like a snake that we hate because we're racist against them? Snakes, you know? Screw snakes. The Bible, it will tell you. Pride comes before a fall. Oh yeah, I forgot song number again. Why do I keep forgetting these are gonna happen? The Bible tells us in James 1, 19 to 20, that we should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. All right, now this episode is why I wanted to make this video. Mr. Hollister, you won't believe it. You just won't believe it. Believe what? I just came from the train station and- Oh sure, it's the old I just came from the train station line. If I've heard it once, I've heard it a thousand times. I, what is it? I, I don't- I don't know what that line is. Word is, he's carrying a grudge for you. Grudge? That's what he said. Well, why? What'd I ever do to him? I mean, besides buying the horse he was saving up for. That's pretty bad. Not half as bad as stealing his business. You stole his business? And his girl. Ooh. Yeah, those were some fun times. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'll be getting off here. Five minutes! Five minutes! Rest. Uh, yes, but you see, I, I bought a ticket for Prairie Town. This is where I live. Fair enough. Ten minute! Ten minute rest! No, no, no. See, I, I, I'm i not going any farther. I, I live here. I, I won't be going on another vacation until next year. Fair enough. Twelve months! Twelve months rest! Um, well, uh, okay. I just, I wish I had that life. I wish I could take a twelve month rest. I'd still be tired when I woke up, honestly. But, uh, it would help me catch up a little bit. Hollister! Gilroy! Did you get my message? I did. And I'm here to tell you, you're not gonna get away with it. Get away with what? You know what? I don't have to put up with your shenanigans. I'm keeping my eye on you, mister. Hollister, have you been twirling around in circles really fast again? Yeah, what of it? <laughs> what? <laughs> Why is that a lie? Word around town is he carrying a grudge for you. A grudge? Why would Hollister carry a grudge for me? What'd I ever do to him? 
I mean, besides tricking him into buying that lame horse he thought I was saving up for. That's pretty bad. Not half as bad as setting him up with that general store. That thing will never make a dime. Unless, of course, there's a boycott. Which is a very confusing thing to say out of context if you hadn't seen the other episode. <laughs> and this clingy woman I couldn't get rid of. Cleaning woman? You couldn't get rid of a cleaning woman? What does she do what I do? Move. Hey, yeah, that's how I got rid of my gardener. You think gardeners are bad? Try getting rid of a handyman. Had to fake my own death. Twice. He was a clingy handyman. <sighs> So, what? Tiki finally gave up and opened his own toy factory. Wait a minute. I was your handyman. Patterson, you're alive! Well, I... It, oh, 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 oh. What is happening? <laughs> Patterson, get up. I know you're not dead. Yes, I am. I mean, uh, I'm not Patterson. I'm his brother, uh, Schmatterson. Just thought I'd lay down here and work on my tan. Oh. Well, you look just like Patterson. May he rest in peace. Nice tan. Thanks. <laughs> You can play at this game. I can hold a grudge just as well as the next guy. Wait a minute. I'm the next guy. All right, three can play at this game. Didn't mean to leave you out there, Schmatterson. It's all right. I won't hold it against you. I'm. It can't honestly just be my 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 nostalgia say this. This is hilarious. I know I already said it, but how did they not make more of these? You tell Gilroy I'll meet him in the street at noon. After a ten or now? Now. Okay. Gilroy! Gilroy! Hollister said he'd meet you in the street in June! June? Well, it's much too hot to be out in the street in June. You tell him I'll meet him in January. Now we're... Thank you. Will do. Hollister, Gilroy said he'd meet you at 1230. Either that or January, he couldn't make it out exactly. Well, I've got January and 1230 available. But if he doesn't meet me at 1230, then at 1231, I got a dentist appointment. After that, I won't be available till February. More 145. At that point, half the day is gone. You tell him if we're gonna do that, we might as well meet under the moon! It's funny! It is! Like, this is just as funny, if not funnier, than, like, Camp Laszlo was, if anybody remembers that show. Alistair said, you might as well meet at noon! Well, that's more like it. Noon it is, then. <laughs> and so they met. At 4.17. What? On a cloudy day. Huh? In May. How did that happen? <laughs> they were meeting at noon, and then they're like, eh. Ah. We'll meet in May at 417. It's just you and me. Howdy, boys. And the sheriff. Sheriff! Don't try to stop us, sheriff. Gilroy and I are having it out once and for all. Don't tell me. Let me guess. You heard that Gilroy was coming in on the noon stage carrying a grudge, right? Whoa! How do you do that? But Gilroy, when you came in on the noon stage, you weren't carrying a grudge, were you? No! You're good. What were you carrying? Well, some luggage. And? My hat. And? Some fudge for Hollister. Some fudge for Hollister. So you weren't carrying a grudge. You were carrying what? My luggage. <laughs> Just count it out again. Just say it again. Maybe it'll make sense. You're saying he isn't carrying a grudge for me? That's right. Wow. How'd you figure that out? I've been sheriff in this town for ten years. And every year it's the same thing. Gilroy comes back from vacation on the noon stage carrying some fudge, and you think he's carrying a grudge. Every year? This happens every year? <laughs> How have they not learned? Oh, uh, well, they are stupid. I guess that makes sense. The sheriff before me was here for 20 years, and he knew it too. And the sheriff before him was a houseplant, and he knew it too. In fact, there's not a stone or piece of sagebrush nor doorknob in the entire territory that doesn't know all about the annual fudge grudge mix up, except for you two. Oh, and, uh, Patterson. May he rest in peace. <laughs> May he rest in peace. Oh, I get it. Grudge sounds a lot like luggage. <laughs> that's good writing. Uh, that's good. It's good. It is good. It holds up. I'm glad it does. I really wish there was more. I really wish there was more. I might have to come back and do another episode of this later. This was good. <laughs> Love is big, it's bigger than a western sky. Once the song number's over anyway. I think he was talking to you and you know it. Not me. Tutti mi chiedono, tutti mi vogliono. Donne ragazzi, vecchie fanciulle. Quella parrucchia, presto la barba. Quella salpiglia. Robin Williams and Mrs. Doubtfire? La 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 A te fortuna, a te fortuna, a te fortuna non mancherà Sono il fatto tutte la città Sono il fatto tutte la città
Oh, look, and the snake's back. That was an odd callback, but all right. There was the opera singer earlier, but he wasn't singing this song, and that was in a different episode. I don't know. Well, anyway. Yeah, so, like I said, it's it's good. It's good. I mean, it's obviously intended for very young children, and it succeeds at being entertaining for young children. I speak from experience. I loved this as a little kid, but even now, as an adult, looking back, the comedy holds up. It's got clever writing. It's very quick. It's to the point. It doesn't waste any time just with pointless characters or plot developments. It's got... Tons of different interesting characters to choose from, so you can have a plot centered around a different character each episode, and it feels natural, and it flows, and everybody's got good chemistry, everybody's got good development. It really is a shame that there wasn't more of this made. Like I said, there's probably like three of these that I know of. I think that's it. So, yeah, maybe I'll have to come back and review the other two at some point, but... Uh, what do you guys think? If you haven't seen this before, were you weirded out or did you think it was funny like I said it was? And if you did see it before as a kid, is it still just as funny and good as you remember? Thanks for watching, guys. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe if you're new here. Thanks. Bye. Grudge sounds a lot like luggage.